What is up, guys, and welcome to another shoutcast with Batala SC. Today we will see the revenge match between Picoy and JL7. Our match from yesterday. Um, we saw from our previous series Picoy clawing his way back from. Uh, the shackles of defeat and reversing the series from a 2-0 deficit to a 4-3 win ladies and gentlemen and now we are just waiting for our um, players and now we can jump right into our tournament will enter our tourney as uh, game one game one will begin now waiting for our players to get ready for the action We are set to game number one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go spawning in the top side of our map, Fighting Spirit, in our game number one. As the Red Terran almost getting that clean sweep from the first their first series, but is back for revenge. JL7. And his opponent spawning at the bottom right side of our map, clutching our win from yesterday's series. Will he be able to maintain that record? Give it up for Picoy. Using the green Protoss pieces. So. Uh, familiarizing from what has happened from yesterday I would I wouldn't be surprised that both players would start with pylon and supply depot first as you can see here supply depot for jl7 and pylon for Protoss player. Now the SCV from JL7 immediately sent the scout. And 
gateway is being added a gas so it's a one gate gas and a one racks at the moment for our Terran now SCV trying to attack the gateway and <laughs> get tasered to death again by our probe Probius, green Probius from Decoy. Supply Depot, another Supply Depot at the high ground. Still one racks and nothing else for our Terran player at the moment. Gas being taken at the 2 minute 40 mark. Picoy would scout at the left side of the, our uh, map fighting spirit but would then be successful in finding our red Terran. Now Coming up into coming up from the Terran players base, two Marines marching one at a time, one getting swiped by the Zealot at the front, and another being chased down and. Getting bled to death, finally returning into a carcass, uh, turned into a carcass is our Red Marine Terran. Red Terran Marine. Now, with the positioning of JL7's um, units, where they are coming from, Picoy has a clear idea of where the Terran base is located two gateway units roaming around the map probe checking for proxies and also probably looking for some hidden bases JL7 sending his SEV both workers Chilling each other, and now a Terran Barracks is seen! Oh my god! What a disaster for JL7 right off the bat. From where he was supposed to create a Barracks, that is the time. Oh! He should have killed this, the probe. SCV has higher damage in comparison to probes, but either way, it's a good call because the, SC, uh, the Zealots are back. In town to party. Two zealots at the sides and two zealots. Now six zealots roaming around the map. Picoy clearly with a map presence advantage at the moment. And JL7 using a lot of marines in the process is now. Um, forced to stay at his own base at the moment. Now I'm wondering what Picoy would do with these zealots. Scan being sent. And where was that scan sent? I think it's in the main base. Two gateways. Three gateways. Picoy, great macro at the moment, but was side blocked at the 32 33 mark. Still, great usage of minerals, but there's an influx of gas. I think it's about time to tech up 
or produce gas units such as the Gears. On the other hand, JL7 building his um, um, signature Mamari Bunker at the front. The Mamari Bunker build, ladies and gentlemen. A bit of an open setup for Terran, but this two Mamari Bunker packs a punch. Packs quite a punch. And they will rain down on you. They will rain down on your parade. And now JL7, seeing that there's an attack at the front of his base, is he ready? Now, Marines killing the shields of the Zealots. Now, the Zealots positioning themselves to target these siege tanks. Beautiful micro by JL7, not allowing Tikoi. Oh! Not allowing the boy to deal extra damage, but five zealots, ladies and gentlemen, five zealots at the middle of the line would wreak havoc. One being left out, as reviewed at the front, siege tank, not really siege, and uh, not quite really siege, siege tank. Killing a Dragoon, but all of the Marines of JL7 is mutilated and decimated by this clump, including the SCBs. Now, Siege Tank trying his best to save the day, shooting at these Zealots, but it is an exposed Siege Tank. More marines swiping, getting a tag of that beautiful tank metal. And now he will do his last line of defense into the covers of the bunker. Will he be successful? Yes, he will, but the damage is done. Picoy with a masterful play. With just six zealots in a dragoon, wiping everything. From our Terran player, sending more zealots and expanding, probably expanding. Uh, I think this Citadel of Adun is a bit off. And it's a bit off, and he can't expand here, but either way. What what would an expansion do if you're going to win any uh if you're about to win anyway? So it's just you go Ooh JL7 still holding Oh Okay Another swipe Wouldn't be enough Another kill for our Terran player now JL7 scampering to save his dear life and SCV repairing two SCVs mining and no gas being taken at the moment four gateways are added zealots being clumped up for a pre-contained position he knows that he can't break this as of yet so, Picoy's best move would be to expand and just make sure that the Terran player won't be doing any of their shenanigans at the moment. Now, five zealots. Will this five zealots be enough? I think they won't be enough. Still shooting. Oh, another clutch play. JL7 holding for dear life. Picoy still stubbornly head batting his way up the ramp to no avail. Another healer SCV. Another MVP healer SCV is up at the ramps, healing the damage tanks. If this goes on, slowly but surely, JL7 will be able to stabilize. And Picoy, if he continues to bleed a lot of mineral units, this would be a bad 
situation to be put in. Now, again, Pikoi using a bait zealot. Oh my god, a bait zealot, but now five zealots immediately closing in on the siege tank, killing both siege tanks in the process. The bunkers are next, and it is looking grim for our red Terran player. Bunkers burning and SEVs repairing, but the main target is not the bunker, but the command center itself. Now, Picoy successfully denying mining in progress into the hands, uh, into the Terran's base, even though JL7 would farm Picoy chipping off any stray units. He is at the range of the bunkers and definitely will lose one or two zealots. But in the, pro in the process, deleting all the supply depot. One supply depot with one HP left burned into oblivion, not even giving the Terran SCV a chance to heal them. What would our Terran player do? I think he now knows what is his mistake. But our Protoss player JL7 at the moment would um Picoy at the moment wouldn't want to give our Terran player JL7 a breathing room. Will the land be successful? No, it won't be successful. Another SEV falling. But the bunkers aren't fully packed zealots with speed chasing these SCVs four more SCVs in the production oh he expanded nice I thought it was an off pixel but what do you know what do you know it was enough it was an enough space So, I think this is enough. This is the beginning of the end. Pigoy just sending clumps of zealots, forcing JL7 remaining mineral to be in, um, wasted to his bunkers. Now, as you can see, the bunkers slowly burning. I don't know how much marines are there, but as we can see, this is not the best wall of for our Terran player. E -e -e Idolo pa shout out Idolo Andy Samonte. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for watching. Um our 2K champ show match 2.0 between JL7 versus Picoy. JL7 as long as we live we will build <laughs> that is the Dominion's pride but the pride will be... Oh my god, it's just one marine at a bunker? And the finishing blow is here. DDs at the front. Specialty of Picoy. Seems like jl 7s having a hard time dealing with these units. And now, as he see the glimmer and shimmer of these cloaked Dark Templars, he's done. Game 1 would be concluded, ladies and gentlemen. And we are at a reverse situation in comparison to our first game yesterday, where in JL7 with the commanding 2 lead now loses the series 0 to 1. But. Don't go away, we still have 6 matches left and a lot more action. We are now going for Polaris Rhapsody, ladies and gentlemen. Polaris Rhapsody is a 2 player map.
and it would be an easy scout for both players because being a two-player map, you can easily send your uh, send your workers. Workers are easily sent to the opponent's base. There is no way to go, just so one way, which is the opponent's base's way. <laughs> Um, there has been a drop. We will be waiting for this to respawn. In the meantime, share this. Thank you to the viewers who are watching, and have a great night, everyone. I'm sorry uh, to those who are just joining. I suggest you repeat from the start and check out the first game because that is also action-packed but if you want to go oh the coil left the game we have to redo our map now coming up into Coming up from the We'll be rerouting Once again, creating Polaris Rhapsody for game number 2 Same map, same Map pool, same prize pool And same players because this is a revenge match and we will see who would claim victory. I hope the JL7 would make it into a match series 1 1 so that we will see the um, another set of games for these wonderful players. But if not, it just goes to show that because. Um, win from the first series that they had was not a fluke and speaking of not a fluke would he be able to create that scenario once again spawning in the northwest position spawning in the northwest position of our map polaris have to be give it up for picoy up one zero And his opponent at the southeast spawning as the beige? Is that a beige? I don't know, it's beige or pink. Sorry, I am not a color savvy, I am not a woman, but I'll just say a pale pink Terran by the name of Jail7. We'll see if his wall ins would be a bit better than the previous map. Wall in is the name of the game for this two players. The Terran, knowing that he has a point of vulnerability at the early game due to the overly powered gateway units of the Protoss, has to respect and use his buildings as a way of blocking the opponent's wave of attack constricting their pattern on how they would enter the base of the Terran. A lot of good players knows how to defend just with limited um, buildings blocking the entrance of their main base or blocking the entrance of their second base so that they can easily thwart the opponent. Now Picoy getting into that macro mode once again delaying the gateway by a bit now reducing more probes this is a bit of a late gateway so it's not a normal gateway usually at around nine worker because has already created a gateway but now he has opted to delay it a bit probably opted to delay it a bit or just delayed uh just so happened that it was delayed 
we will see. On the other hand, Gia7 tightening. That is a better Rax position for our Terran player. This is more of a StarCraft 2-ish setup. Because in StarCraft 2, you can easily wall in with just two depots and a barracks or any other big production um, big production building so uh, uh, except for a command center of course now JL7 really wanting to get that tight bunker okay we are lifting up where are we putting that He's probably putting a bunker here and place that. Um, oops, a bit of a miss set up here for JL7. But the thing is, the Marines, produ the Marine production was delayed. A probe is running forward, followed by a zealot. This would be. This may pose. Uh, this may cause a problem for our Terran player. Now, Mamari Bunker at the front and one Marine at the finished bunker. So I don't think JL7 um, Picoy would be scouting this base anytime soon. But he will know everything that he has to know. Now, in this setup, JL7 can hide whatever tech that he's planning to do. In this scenario, zealot, two more zealots, three zealots, and um, in, uh, an incoming ninja base sooner or later. Or our Terran player. Now, this is a better wall. This is a better wall for our Terran. And he is quite prepared. Look at that beautiful mammary bunker. Terran racks at the front base. The mountain range of bunkers here at the front base. Now, three zealots, they can't do anything as of yet until charge has been researched and a lot more supporting dragoons are made. More marines being produced and forced into that little shell of oh look at this setup by Picoy. A ninja base at the top and probably a ninja base at the bottom. What a ballsy man Picoy is. If we see that, that would be meta. <laughs> That would be legendary for both uh, for our Protoss player. Both is um, supply wise 22 to 34 in comparison to 30 to 41 side of our yellow Protoss. Dragoons being added at the 5 minute mark. For Zeta's and Dragoons, they can't possibly um, break this. But now, there was a cancel. I think this is a factory. Two factories being added. Oh, what just happened? The SCV finding his way out of that little zealot contain. Uh, would be scouting. Is he gonna proxy? Dragoons piling one at a time. Citadel of a dune being added. And there you have it. Two fact for our Terran player. Two fact one racks. And probably another cancel from our Terran player JL7. A bit of um, quite a bit of a blunder. 
Um, those are indirect errors that would favor Picoy and would slowly build up against JL7. Three Dagoons. These are just two gates. Gateway number three being added at the moment. Macro wise, Picoy in the lead. Unit wise, Scan being sent to the main base to see the development of our Protoss camp. A bit of a stalemate at the moment. Terran cannot go out, but Protoss cannot go in. Both players macroing and powering up. For that early mid game battle, now knowing Picoy, he will try to create the tempo, and I think the zealot speed is done. He will dive, he'll definitely dive this high ground. This high ground is not really powerful. It just has two siege tanks and two bunkers full of enemies. But if the RNG prevails for JL7, this would be melted like butter. Because there is a miss miss percentage in this game. Unlike its SC2 counterpart, there is no miss counter for another scan sent and what do you know a DT two siege tank shots and look at this JL7 really hard countering the setup of Chikoi now DTs won't get past these Set up as well as zealots before taking a lot a bit of damage. Missile turret for detection. Um the bad thing about this setup is it is very vulnerable to other side attacks. Okay, now we can see that JL7 putting a bit of cover. So this would be good cover for dropship attacks on the left side but this area is quite quite bare even though there is each tank here it can easily cover this place so you will see great is the perfect solution for that so if you're if you're a Terran and you're planning for rates I suggest you not to invest on missile turrets that much because they can easily control the skies. The Protoss won't build Corsairs to battle them out. Won't probably build... Um, will not probably build your scouts as well because they are too expensive. DT seeing the scouts flying towards the main base of the Protoss. And they hard counter the... Hard counter the Reaver. Reaver shuttle combo. So this is really good for JL7. Is there an anti-air for our Protoss player? There is none. Protoss Pylon being shot at. And now the rates will rain with this guy. I think three hits of rate with one shot of rope. Let's see. Oh. Four, four rates will one shot of rope. Photon cannon. A bit late to the party. Three more rates. Now, JL7 giving Picoy a taste of his own medicine. And slowly focus firing on those. Potent cannons. Nah. Oh my god. 
Picoy, you're attacking your gateway. And as you can see here, the rates are saved because of their invisibility. There is no... There is no anti... Um, anti-invisibility or observers at the moment for our Protoss player. But GS7 shouldn't overextend his stay because... Oh, look at this. More rates incoming. Command center at these um, approximation, a proxy command center near our uh, Protoss Bears base. What a boss move. More raids being used. A lot of the raids have no more. Have no more. Um, mana, energy. For the invisibility, trying to eradicate the cannons as much as they can, but they are now in range of the, one of the dragoons. Now, as you can see, DTs not being managed, but uh, not being controlled at the moment. But these DTs, once they're found out, and they're, fi they're finally found out, Proto Shuttle scampering away, but the DTs are now swiping. Towards the mineral line uh, of our Terran player, as I've said, these DTs and this top side is the weakness for the base of our Terran player. Even though each tanks are intimidating without vision, they can't shoot these. Um, cannot shoot. Oh, another scan is being used. He has to swipe. He has to swipe. And there is no more scan for our Terran player. What a clutch move by Picoy. And he missed the opportunity to close out because of this missile turret. Great positioning of this turret by JS7. Picoy forcing his way to the base of our Protoss. Now, sieging quite a bit. He needs to add a detector here if he wants to say to the game. Siege down, firing and denying the zealots' advances. But at what cost? Siege tank at 48 HP, 68 HP. Just one volley from a friendly fire would end this siege tank's career. Dragoons marching forward to the main line. SCBs being produced by the ninja base. Uh, Picoy creating his own ninja base. So imagine this entanglement of bases. <laughs> Both hazard this position, both near the opponent's base, and they can easily send um, reinforcements that would kill the opponent. Siege tank. I don't see any more siege tank. There is a bit of a siege tank. What do we call this? Oh! There's a dropship, but the Dragoons are in position to snipe these Terran dropships. Would Picoy be able to spot this? He knows that the dropship was seen and was shot by one of the Dragoons. I don't know if Picoy is ready. Cannons at the front. Ready to welcome these two dropships. I know these two dropships are carrying siege tanks and once they um jl7 loses these siege tanks it would spell defeat for our pink terran we'll see what will happen picoy positioning himself observers at the front to check 
for any bullet ability. But the Dragoon's eating pot shots. And the dropship would live to see another day. They would live to see another day. Siege um Terran Rates. Firing over the Dragoon, but now GS7 didn't know that the opponent has observers losing one. Losing two of the Terran rates and now the drop incoming. Not yet, just pausing a bit. Siege tank being positioned at the main base. Immediately firing on this wonderful pylon. Now one of these pylons will be the towering two gateways, hopefully. Jagoon scampering back to the wild. He knows that he cannot break this position as of yet. But the zealots are here. And the zealots are not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Dragoons! Uh, these gateways are tanky as hell. But great target fire. Focusing down these pylons. Now, even though the raids are raining all over the skies, their DPS are quite dismal to see. And they will be baited. Oh, I thought they would be baited to the range at sight of our. Our Protoss player. Both players just farming up minerals. Protoss shuttle. Five probes, just chilling by the assimilator, not doing anything, which is fine. We're just chilling. And oh, what do we have here? Picoy spotting the hidden base. I knew this would spell trouble for our Terran player. And now that Picoy knows where the income is coming from, he would take action to his hands and immediately. He would immediately send the full force of the Gateway Man into the space. JL7, what would he do to react? Raids trying to defend, but the Terran Command Center is a burning fast like a cinder block. 400, 300, and nada for our Terran player. More rates hopelessly scampering their way and trying to defend his base, but it wouldn't be the case. And the cleanup squad is here, deleting all of the structures of the Terran. Still mine a bit of minerals, 500. 100, 100. This mineral is not yet mined. Wow. So three mineral, three mineral patches not mined, even a bit. That would be sad. <laughs> SCVs running for their lives and checking, just baiting the opponent whether um, they'll be going back to the main base or. Going to a different base, and yes, they will. But Picoy would see this immediately. The dropship was seen. Now, Picoy in a commanding position has two going three bases. 
two going three bases and the drop ships. Um, not the drop ships. The starports are pumping up battle cruisers at the moment. But with one base, your um, resources are very limited as a Terran at this point of the game. Cannons being constructed. As you can see, the full power of the gateway is seen at this setup. Still, just for four gates, would it be enough? I think Picoy has to add more. What just happened? I think there was a cancel. The SCVs. Oh no, I think the rates did that. The rates canceled the. Nexus and JL7 deleting the Templar Archive. A lot of these raid um, snipe squad remain uncontested in the air. Two dragoons, three dragoons, and a zealot at the ramp. Checking if there would be an aggression, but as we can see, JL7 just bit biding his time. I think this is another battle cruiser incoming. Air wise, air superiority wise, JL7, I would give it that point, but macro wise, star ports, uh, star gates being added. Chikoi knows that he has to have. Air feed production because sooner or later battle cruisers will pop out. Still, no contest for this air squad, air feed. And now, as you can see, the battle cruisers are shown, and this would signal the boy to probably add more cannons, add more gateways. You can see that there is another Stargate, triple Stargate and a fleet big gun incoming. No gas being taken at this base. Raid would play a crucial part in the battles of the air. Probes being pulled towards the second base, second uh, ninja base. Does he know that there's a ninja base in this vicinity? We will find out. Now he knows the scan is confirmed. And he knows that the ninja base is here, guys. He knows that the ninja base is here. Now, what would our Terran player do? He would expand at the front. He would expand at the front with the main and the most, say, uh, the safest and the nearest option for a Terran player is to expand. As we see, both players don't really like to uh, expand at the main base. And Artosis Pylon in the middle of all these structures. Is gonna be depowered and cannon say oh cannon say bye bye no they won't one only one cannon unpowered Protoss observatory and port but this Protoss pylon still hanging by a thread now the dragoons trying to fight their way and defeat the mighty battle cruisers buying time for the Protoss bear. JL7 not looking, not microwing his battle cruisers. That will eating a lot of potent cannon shots from the mounted spider legs. And all three battle cruisers will perish. Getting one pylon and a bit of probes. Not the best trade that we can offer for the game. JL7. Has to be more proactive in the match. But Picoy is smelling blood in the water once again. With this dancing zealot showing his dance moves. Will this be the killing blow? Stargates 
open and ready for action, but they're not warping in units at the moment. They are not warping units at the moment. Another battle cruiser left behind. The lone battle cruiser commander. Pico can easily end the game with this push. Starving the already starved Terran in the process, but we will see how decisive our yellow protoss would be. More dragoons roaming around. Two dragoons versus a battle cruiser. Not a bad situation probably the battle cruiser would, would win but with fiery engines in the trade that would be it wouldn't be a good mark and now as you can see as i've called it zealots partying like it's the usa denying <laughs> denying the mining the only uh, plausible mining platform for our talent player. These mineral patches are starting to dwindle by the minute. 548, 676. So he has to secure this. He has to put down his barricade. A dragoon with. A lot of testosterone dive to its death. Now, this is a good setup if there is a wall in. Apparently, there isn't. And most likely, oh, they're not. I thought they would be easily sniped. Yes, they would be easily sniped. Oh no, JS7, what have you done? You have forsaken your tanks once again. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. With that on siege, saving one of the tanks in the process. Great trade. Getting some pot shots from the dragoon. But now this dragoon, high in testosterone, getting killed once again. <laughs> I don't know if mechanical units have testosterone, but I can see that they have the angst. To deny this mining base, supposedly mining base. Five dragoons just dangling their photon cannons. So you can see here, dangling their mighty photon cannon dongles. Terran Command Center at 635. Not enough to burn, but burnable <laughs> once it reaches the orange mark this would start burning this would start burning Now four battle cruisers in the process, adding more siege tank at the front lines. Picoy with a commanding lead, three carriers would be six in the moment. Scan. I don't know where this guy. Okay, I think this guy was sent into the third. Next is being taken. Now the battle cruiser will, will once again try to wreak havoc into the main base. But these are a lot of photon cannons and dragoons. You can see here, JL7 scanning. 
and see that there are four Stargate in the production and now the Karius will spot the, the battle fleet of the Terran Confederacy JL7 target firing on the Protoss carrier immediately deleting one but is not microwing properly now Corsairs buying some time for these carriers to go out they are just three carriers and the DPS of the um oh no the DPS of the battle cruisers can go to the with the carriers but with more carriers popping out I don't think it would be enough it would only be um, only be a matter of time before this pool battle ship fleet from JL7 be wiped out in the hands of the Protoss Armada Continuous Micro by Picoy deleting one chasing two and they wouldn't back out they will continue to press on with the issue Dragoons will surround but instead of killing the battle cruiser will focus down this command center now on the red and now gun Picoy what a mad lad what a mad lad GG Picoy game number two is done Okay, okay. <laughs> now we are back on our lobby. Um, two, <laughs> two players. Yes, Doogie Corner expansion, two guys. Ready for. <laughs> Fending Picoy telling the players, um, telling the team that he just defended the crucial points, which are the expansions. His expansions. Now it's a 2 0. I'm sorry. Now it's a 2 0 lead for our player Picoy in the chat. We will see in game three. Would this be a reverse situation and JL7 would return the favor? Or would the uh, leader of the series, Picoy, take it home in this best of seven match in Ascension? Don't go away, guys. Next map, Ascension, a three-player map with with three different um, with three different spawning points at the twelve o'clock, the four o'clock, and the seven o'clock position. Did it? 
did it. We are just waiting for our uh, player JL7. <laughs> Banga win um joining the game and immediately leaving. Now we are at the third game of our best of seven match hub. And uh, we are now back into some star cap action. Spotting in the top Top side, 12 o'clock position. Give it up for JL7 down 0 2, hoping that he would come up with a better strat. And his opponent holding that 2 0 lead. Give it up for our. Um, I can't say defending champion because it's just one series. But currently at the top spot between both players, our yellow Protoss once again, Picoy. Uh, the observer is chatting with some of the players that wanted to join. Now, tier 7 uh, with the um, supply depot wall at the front of his base. Um, this is the map that is considered very, very Terran favored when it comes to defending. And with, when it comes to attacking as well, because you have a lot of choke points, you have a lot of choke points, you have a lot of choke points. Even though there's a backside here that can easily be, be dealt with um, proper buildings. Now, Terran Barracks being placed at the front, and most likely there would be a bunker. Next up, uh, GN Thirds. Hello, uh, we're casting a 2K championship show match between JL7 and Koi. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Now, as you can see, our player here. Gateway, gas opener, and a scouting setup for our favorite player at the moment with the stats of 2-0. Um, we'll see if JL7 would make it into a series later. Protoss Gateway being added. Now the Terran SCV poised to create a factory I suppose. Factory it's not yet enough. There's still uh, it still needs 80, 20 more gas. Now probe at the front we will be able to scout everything, but I don't think he will be able to go out. Oh he will go out! He will go out. Now the SCVs can't enter here. 
Zerglings can enter here as well as probes. Drones as well, but not Zealot. So this is basically a full wall. And Baratatatata goes to your Marines. Look at this majestic probe. Getting a cheeky gas block at the main base. <laughs> For Terran player Picoy. Going around with his opponent. Forcing JL7 to pop out of the bunker. And force this. Um, the reaction for JL7 to deny this assimilator. But the damage. Um, the structure is done. And they will. Uh, they will be. Well, JL7 will not take the gas anytime soon, but still, it's annoying for your opponent. To your opponent, if you gas steal them and they can see everything, because this Protoss Assimilator has a vision, mind you, so he can easily see what goes out and what goes in from the Terran's point of view. Now, Marines rotating around, SCV trying to scout. Zealot's position at the front lines. A lone marine ringing around the Rosie and will be able to scout what is up. Now, more marines being produced, but the production for our Terran player is lagging at the moment, and there would be five zealots running by and surrounding this bunker. I think this would be the beginning. Of the end for our Terran player. Zealots targeting the middle line, battling out with the forces of Picoy, cleaning up one, two Zealots. SCV is forced to attack these Zealots. Oh my god, I thought the Zealots wouldn't be able to pass by, but even Zealots can pass by those choke points. So basically, it's not a tight wall. More Zealots passing by, even though the crisis at the main base is done. It is not yet over. A lone marine helplessly defending the Terran motherland. And more. SCV is being pulled at the moment. JL7 scampering to create that bunker, even with the siege tank. This zealot is creating chaos upon chaos. Picoy just sending two zealots. Sending two zealots at the base of the Terran is enough. To cause damage. Now, Marines. This is a bait assimilator, if I see. Uh, because JL7 is scampering to delete this. He has no focus at the main. Uh, the goddess. At the main gate. Now, Citadel of Adun being researched. One base, Protoss. Picoy, even though bleeding, units, left, right, and center, he has done quite a lot of damage in this scenario. And the Siege Tank being forced to move in a more formidable position would be able to hit this Assimilator to its doom. Four more zealots up and coming. Now, there is no charge, but these zealots are getting massacred one by one. 
Terran Bunker, still at 295. Doesn't need heal at the moment. Slowly but surely, the tank count is rising for our Terran player. And as the game goes on, Henry Koi doesn't adjust his setup. This would be a nightmare for our uh, Protoss player. Once this tank count really, really grew that large, um, a big push will go. Oh! What do we see here? Oh, it's another bunker. Classic memory bunker from JL7. And I don't know if the zealots are being positioned. Ah, no. I don't know if marines are being produced at the moment. I don't see any. Oh, there it is. There are the marines. Now, 3 each tank, unbreakable, but with the help of this beautiful unit producing technology, <laughs> the DTs are coming to town. I don't see any detectors for our Terran scan. Used! Oh my god, that would be a misplay for our Terran player, JL7. This would be a huge blunder. And we will see what would happen. The DTs are coming to town. Three DTs running up and pushing forward. And there you have it. DT sliding. Sliding in the Terran's DM. <laughs> Sliding into that crucial missile turret. Swipe. Killing a missile turret once again. Not, not even able to finish the missile turret. That would be the saving grace. JL7. Another blunder upon blunder. Picoy. Toying with his opponent. Now, because there is no detection at the front, there is no detection at the main base, and the scan was used. Oh no, even lifted! JL7 could have clutched that scan and at least delete one to make a safe space for his unit. Now, this is GG. GG GG Everyone Terran Missile Turret Swipe to Misery And JL7 is quite I know he's quite disappointed with his playstyle Seven sweep, poo poo. Then scan, and that is it. End of game number three with a three zero commanding. What a commanding lead from our Protoss player. Now, we, will we ever see a reverse 4-0 from our Terran player JL7? Picoy is really happy as you can see here in the chat. <laughs> GG. Hey, hey. For our <laughs> Terran player. Now, we are going to our next map. Hidden Track. And 
We'll take it from there. Hopefully... Hopefully this is... gonna be a series you're just checking in No blood. With the hidden trap ready in action, will we see the return of JL7 or would our Protoss player take that sweet 4 0 victory sweep? We will find out in our next map. Hidden trap. We will be loading five seconds. And... Now we are here at the map hidden track spawning in the top left position are gray. This is bluish gray, but I don't know, is it periwinkle? <laughs> I don't know the color, but I know I know one thing for sure, the 3-0 leading scorer of this Grudge match, Picoy versus JL7. Give it up for Picoy. And his opponent in the southwest position as our Teal Terran. That I'm sure of, that Teal when I see one. Give it up for JL7. Now, JL7. We'll be placing is Supply Depot and Pylon, Gateway near the main base. So, at this scenario, JL7 can. Well, both players are at a vertical position, but Picoy can easily scout. Well, both players can easily scout. I think Picoy has a faster route in comparison to JL7. But Picoy scouting at the wrong direction. This would be a wasted. Not really a wasted effort. Still reconnaissance is the key. And Picoy is ever vigilant in doing that. Ever since game number one. Reading the strategy of JL7 very nicely. Now, for our Terran player, 
getting some gases and rapses. More supply depot at the front. Zealot going to scout the right direction while Probe going for the last missing spot and now Picoy confirms that it is a vertical map position battle now there is one bunker one bunker one SCV supposedly blocking the way and one Zealot <laughs> saying uh, no bluff saying that there is a big gap and there he is now Bikoi killing one SCB and damaging one to 28 HP sending another zealot to the front more marines to be introduced to the bunker at the moment Another memory bunker. Classic JL7 build. Um, if I would suggest, I think this is. This is a bit wasteful if he's not continuously creating marines. Terran Factory is the follow up for our Protoss player. Two zealots park at the front now running again to wreck some havoc at the base of her Terran player. Gateway number three being added. Range research for the goons. Supply depots. Aligned perfectly, but it would have been better if the supply depot, the other supply depot, was added here to complete the wall in. I guess we'll find out what damage these zealots would do. Waiting for another zealot is Picoy. Third gateway online and ready to warp some units from higher. This is a four gas. Uh, for SCV gas mine, this is a bit of an efficiency. Now, more marines going to the fray. I think the time, the time that Gel 7 was building would be more than enough. Now, running towards the mineral line once again is our Terran, uh, Protoss player Gel 7 Now, Killing. Oh! Oh! Killing the command uh, bomb sat station. Now, if this is the pattern that we are seeing, it would telegraph that another DP is bound to happen. Another DP is bound to happen. But as we can see, dragoons are. The name of the game for both us player boy now Terran Factory being added there is no siege tank being produced at the moment there should be a siege tank and there's the anime there should be an animation for siege tank Two factories would be used for churning in some siege tank. Terra Supply Depot being added as well. Dragoons at the front. Not pushing the issue. Scan is used to check if there's a ninja base on the right side. Five. Five Dragoons 
I don't think this is a this is a nice idea. Decoy trading shields for bunker health. Just a bit nice. But pushing forward and getting in range with another bunker. Killing one of the Marines and losing one Dragoon. Now the siege tank is ready to siege this baby. And that is an unbreakable fort with that tiny choke point and clunky units. So that is what disaster is spelled. Dragoons ramping up. Uh, the dragoons walking up the ramp while siege tank in siege mode. Uh, ready to welcome them. Ready to welcome them at the moment. Now, another ninja base for our Protoss player. Three more dragoons being added. At this time of the game, you can add another gateway as a Protoss, but expansion is a must at this point. Eight minutes in. For Siege Tank, JL7 not taking any chances, tightening up the defense at this moment. And he knows he is on the verge of losing because now Bikoi is in a 3 0 commanding lead. Would he waste that 3 0 lead? We will see. JL7 firing a barrage of salvos. Hitting and destroying one of the Dragoons in place. Now, Terran Missile Turrets position to position to <laughs> look at this. Um, Terran Missile Turrets position to protect against air and Protoss Photon Cannons to defend against dropships. Great minds think alike, and as you can see here, this is our fourth match. Siege tank greatly dispersed, but one of the two siege tanks are quite exposed. Now, Pico doesn't know how many. Siege tank. <laughs> Look at this setup. Any dropship that would pass this, any um, any dropship, any basically any and uh, any air air unit. This um science vessels, VCs, rates. Will take a lot of damage before breaking out of this beautiful cannon setup. Now, four gateways and a temporary archive. Let's go, uh, JL7. Would you have the proper turret placement now? Because in just a moment, Picoy would be sending his favorite unit. Your base. Now, we are still. We're still hoping that Jail 7 would not <laughs> go as other freedom to expand. Uh, 
Um, the two R2 co-op servers putting out some advices for both players. Well, they are BGH players, that's why they are not yet expanding at the moment. There we have it, another contain. Now, four siege tanks. Whoa, these boss siege tanks at the front. Oh no. JL7 creating a bit of a havoc here. Picoy has to respect that, even though he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cocoons. Oh no, there's another. Down siege. This is a crucial moment for JL7 if he doesn't siege his units. Oh my god, the BTs are here! And I think the push will begin. JL7, he knows what's up. And there's the swipe incoming. JL7, does he have the scans to defend the BT? Will he be able to enter? No, he won't at the moment. A lot of dragoons. Great scan bait at the moment, but there would be another one incoming. I don't see any detectors. There is one here, but this is not being covered. This is the most crucial area of the Terran base at the moment. Another gas steal by Picoy, really doing some BM. <laughs> well, just manner pylons. It's cool. It's all in the game. There is still no missile turret. Even though there's a scan, there's just one scan. Oh, that is a better adjustment, ladies and gentlemen. A science vessel would directly counter this DT. Three DTs, four DTs. Now, what would our Terran player do? Douche goes the dynamite. Now siege tanks are very exposed in the front. But the goons eating a lot of shells before killing one of these dragoon dragooners. Another dragoon down. Now the DT. Oh my god, the DT is dead. 4 DTs, 3 DTs, 3 DTs left, more Dragoons being added. Now JL7 is a is in a very commanding position at this moment of the game. More Dragoons incoming. Oh, slowly but surely, our Terran player is moving out. Now he knows the value of mech and he is quite willing to transition. He has learned that the Marines do no shit, <laughs> do no damage against these few dead aliens. But now, with the power of Artillery JL7 leading all of the Dragoons blue. Four Dragoons denied once again. Now Protoss Forge active. Stargate. Probably a Corsair would deny this single science vessel. But a single missile turret would deny that Corsair as well. Is this the push that we are waiting? The GG push? Or will the zealots of our Protoss player be fast enough to decimate this siege tank line? We will find out in a few moments. 
Oh, what just happened? We didn't see that coming. There was a group of DTs that slid through the DMs of the Terran and now Scan. Scan is wasted. Zealots diving at the front. DTs swiping at this mineral line. We didn't see that. Where is the dropship that was used to kill? Now we are seeing that there is a Influx. There's an influx of SCVs at the gas. <laughs> They're all been pulled to mine gas. But another ninja base for our Protoss player. Another commanding setup for the Koi. JL7, still a sizable army, would push forward. Science vessel. If these siege tanks were caught off guard and get swiped by DPs and zealots, this would be the fault of this single S, uh, science vessel. S uh, I, I was supposed to, um, I'm always called them SCBs, but they are not SCBs, guys. Now, Proto Scout trying to kill what is underneath. He should focus the science vessels now more than anything. Focus the science vessels now. Goliath incoming. More Goliaths being pulled at the moment. And now the science vessel is being hit. Once the science vessel is done, all the DTs will drain all over the skies. Now Goliath can fare really well against scouts. Science vessel, the crucial part of this army. There is no more mineral be uh, mineral for Bikoi. There is too much tech. Stargate, fleet, beacon, and cannons. Some of the wasted cannons. Oh, there's a lot more mining. Not really mining, but expansions going on, that's why. Oh, look at that. Four bases. Picoy. Once this science vessel kills everything. Oh no! The DT. The DT. Um, pros being pulled, so they're now Chess Seven doesn't know what's happening. He should have pushed and end the game, but he's a bit undecided. Now, the probes are in line to mine a new base. But the siege tank, ready to attack. Now, the science vessel, slowly pushing forward. There is no more units for Picoy. <laughs> this would be a one-hit victory for our Protoss player once this happens. Um, if Picoy would be able to delete the science vessel. He would. He would have a big chance in um, 
eating this apple base but I don't think he has enough even though this would be spawning stuff I think it would be too late the SAV can cover any angle that the DTs <laughs> the DTs would be attacking to Goliath and Science Vessel best combo Now, JL7 trying to end this game even though the main base is decimated for Picoy, he still has a lot of mining bases operating, gateways in production, two bases, three bases fully, uh, two bases fully mining and one in the middle. But I think that's all she wrote for this battle. JL7 making it a 3-1, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, is this gonna be time? It's about time that Jay, um, Picoy would call a GG Stargate being added. He should have used a lot of these expansions immediately. Apparently, wasn't activated fast, fast enough. He can easily outmaneuver this. Now, <laughs> JL7, a bit of a damage. Goliath, look at this. If he can only kill this SCV. Uh, SCV Science Vessel, rather. He would be having time of his life, but apparently, that wouldn't be the case. That wouldn't be the case. Uh, Picoy still has a sliver of hope. He still has three bases, but JL7 has a commanding lead. Macro wise, he is not producing anything because he knows that he is in a wonderful position. Um, Denying mining at the, the lower right, denying mining at the top right. Sooner or later, finding the last base. Another expansion being seen. Rates and Goliaths. GG. The GG. There is no more mining. Oh, look at this. Photon Cannon. Photon Cannon trying its best to live throughout to live another day but the DPS of the raid even though how slow even how slow 71 HP this raid 58 seconds uh, 58 50 46 Photon Cannon will live Science Vessel <laughs> Science Vessel going for the um, One o'clock base Goliath and Rates denying everything Marines denying the center of the map and I think Mikoy slowly should accept this defeat. <laughs> greatest comeback, I don't think it would be a greatest comeback as of yet. JL7 would be fighting hard, really hard to get that 4 0 reverse speed, and I don't think Picoy would allow that. But we will see if JL7 would ride this victory towards the reverse speed. We'll find out soon. So the marine production of 
I don't know how many marines were produced. Six, seven, uh, eight, seven, seven marines. What is this? Oh, a carrier. A carrier, hello. Each tank. Killing that. Photon cannon. Stargate being targeted. And gone down. Patay na ang huling base ng ating 3-0 player. It's still a 3-1 match. Picoy is still ahead of the game. But we have to move on to the next match. Siege tank, gaining the ground. SCV, um, Science Vessel. MVP of this game. Without the Science Vessel, everything would be lost for JL7 and then it was just one hit away from getting destroyed by that scout siege tank killing all of those units oh protoss carrier gateway still not surrender. Still no surrender for our not surrendering, boy. But oh my god, a massacre of rates. I knew it. Oh, what do you know, Protoss Carrier? Would it be the comeback that we're looking for, or will it be? One carry is more than enough to uh, to wipe everything here. Now, Goliaths would be the next unit. I think Goliath would be the next unit for this carrier battling a goliath deleting everything Pentacus first sergeant goliath mvp ladies and gentlemen <laughs> The first Sergeant Goliath is gonna be gone down by this 12 Protoss Carrier. 12 kill Protoss Carrier. Gateway Cybernetic Score. Slowly but surely, uh, Picoy would grow. But. Rate is not the best answer for this. Rate isn't the best answer for this. Picoy just buy more time. And he can. He can. I'm not saying that he will win, but he can win. Under the scan, sees the last bastion of the Protoss player. Pikoi says GG. GG. And we are heading to A31. Let's go, guys. What a long game 27 minutes. Go guys, go 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 go. We won Bikoi. Let us go, let us go. Let's get hyped. And this is our <laughs> Bikoi comeback is Rael. Heal for jail 7 Bikoi. And JL7 on our fifth map, Ultimate Stream, just seven spawning at the five o'clock position. May comeback ba kaya? Totoo ba ang himala? Natutulog ba ang Diyos? We will see this develop sooner or later. JL7. Now up on the top left, his opponent, 
the orange problems. Changing color once again, hoping that this is the lucky color to close out the series. It's Picoy. Supply Depot at the front, very common tactic for JL7, securing that high ground wall in. But there is no scouting at the moment for both players. One gate opener versus one wraps opener. Gas being taken by Kiltos. And... JL7 Doing another supply depot at the top side I think this supply depot is a bit useless in essence Probably created, uh, should have placed here. Barracks would be lifted and replaced with a bunker. Hypothetically, Picoy is still playing the standard pylon, advanced pylon into gateway. Um, this is a very. but well, it's the same. Now, ZBT no with the harassment as a better alliance. Yes, I think that is true. Yeah, the mut mutalisks are... Well, this this spot is a bit... Uh, speaking of ZVZ, this spot would be the area. Now, JL7 Creating a marine One at a time a Zealot um, This is the first time Picoy would be Scouting with a Zealot only Not scouting with a probe Protoss Nexus And uh, oh, Cybernetic score And production uh, For our transition to our Tech and Dragoons I don't know if there would be an expansion for our Terran player. Picoy, knowing that there is no opponent at this side of the map, decides to check the lower right hand side and using the Protozealot to check the northeast position. I think this is a run run viable setup for the Terran. Terran Fantasy being placed at the front. A lot of um a lot of unit producing buildings are here as we can see the run by has successfully entered and it will force JL7 to respect that JL7 scampering to run his marine for marines at the front but it will leave 
the main base of our Terran player. Quite vulnerable. Another bunker, the Mamari bunker, is here once again, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Oh my God! What is this? Is this another passable area? Well, the Terrans has passed here. I don't know if. The zealot can pass through there, because there there are some glitches in StarCraft that players can pass through, but units can. Um, some units can, but some units can't. Uh, zealot, three zealots at the time now. Versus eight marines in a bunker. Would he be able to dive in? Yes, he'll be able to dive in. Oh. He would be able to dive in, but the clunky, the clunkiness of the zealots caused their misery. SCV building. Oh, why did it cancel? Zealot at the front of the mineral line will be will try to harass three marines being sent down to chase. Dragoons will start their next phase of the game siege tank siege tank siege mode is already open this expand um this may hinder the expansion of JL7 hopefully there is enough pixel for JL7 to expand but I would highly doubt that Terran Factory churning one base versus one base as per usual. Both players at the same food count 24 supply versus 24 Sai. The Koi leading in um, total Sai count at 4 to 1, adding another gateway. Very usual the Koi playstyle. Mass gateway heavy setup. We are now in game number five. Dragoons and zealots. Oh my god! Oh my god! The blue goop of Protoss oil spilling over the no man zone, which is the ramp. Zealots eating two pot shots. But the speed is done. This zealot with the Oh! I thought this can be easily. I think this can be easily. Swipe. Okay, engineering bay. Good. Terran factory, good. Science vessel. So there's a science facility and a science vessel popping out. I think it's a science vessel. I'm 100% sure it's a science vessel. It can't go through. It can't go through. Science vessel. Scan? Do we see a scan sooner or later? Was there a scan? He didn't use a scan. He forgot to use Now, 
Picoy running out of options. His DE strat is countered by the science vessel. JL7 not uh, investing that much. This is a better counter for DTs because they can chase the DTs away. Early mid. So the vessel is a very special unit for um, the Terran arsenal against this gateway heavy setup. Now the wall in has been broken down. Pylon. Okay, okay. Playing better now as his first few games were three or four axes. That is true. That is true. Chill 7 getting better at transitioning from a Rax um, Marine base to a Marine base into a. Yeah, Bayou base into a mech base composition. Two factories are great incoming expansion being taken by Picoy. Great setup for Picoy. Good read. Photon cannons. More photon cannons. Now these zealots are just here to delay an attack. But the thing is. GG. This would get killed. This would easily get killed. Expansion. Can he expand? Yes. I knew it. Will we push it forward? Oh no. This is a big blunder for our <laughs> Terran player. If the If the okay, this is good. This is good. Okay, if the command center, um, the command center can land. If the factory will be able to complete the setup, the marine shop, uh, the machine shop, machine shop, Terran machine shop, then is it be bad? Uh, science vessel at the front. Even though Science Vessel counters DTs, Zealots can easily All those tanks would be wiped out in a jiffy. Now, scout. Scout can win one v one against rates but not 2v1 should have placed a matrix now 
It just so happened that there's another raid there. So. JL7. Still pumping up some raids. And our expanded Protoss player churning up a lot of those probes and carriers. Carriers? Question mark? I mean, there's no carriers yet. Scout now. Uh, I think this, this, it's just scouts at the moment. These are just scouts. Now the zealots are going back. What is happening to our orange Protoss? Okay, this is a full wall in. No one can enter that and no one can leave that. <laughs> Three more Goliaths being added. So basically we have Three rates. Three or four rates. Both players powering up. Scan. No avail. Um, Picoy would be transitioning to Corsair. Um, this is not the most optimal build for Terrans. Uh, Protoss against Terrans, but it can be a good choice. Especially now that Picoy knows JL7 is JL7 is investing towards Terran rates. If he can kill this science vessel and Terran rate fleet, he would be in a commanding position. The problem is, will he have enough DPS to kill the Goliaths at the ground to deny at the low ground um i, I mean in, in, in a ground battle the zealots would battle out with the goliaths and siege tanks and the science vessel would uh, be used to uh, up against dps there's just one dp at the moment there is no there's a scanner but there are no oh a scanner but there are no Turret at the moment for our Terran player. Placing a turret here would easily secure this area. Now, a move out once again, JL7. Um, a bit wasteful. You don't need to siege that up. Just attack moving all of these with normal attacks would be enough. Now, Stargate, 2 base Stargate. Common metaphor pros. Corsair going to hunt for those science vessels. Detector versus detector. And. Who will win the battle? There we see the Goliaths have the upper hand, but. Instantly deleting all the Terran rates is our Corsairs here. Great movement speed. <clears throat> now the vessels will be hunted. Server speed is done. And I think this vessel is in grave danger. Just one Goliath is defending it. Once this moves out, he can easily rain chaos um, yeah. onto this setup. Now it's time for JL7 to move out with his five man tank Goliath. Five Goliath, five tanks. Will this be easily um, seen? Yes, it will be easily seen by JL7. The scan confirming what's happening with the main base. Oh my god, this SCB! Okay. Uh, not, the science vessel almost dying into the hands of the Terran cannons. 
Picoy just checking out and JL7 positioning himself to siege at the top, uh, at the low ground while shielding his tanks with a bit of Goliath force, I believe. More siege tank being trapped. Oh my god. Mechanic. Machine shop. Now the battle is happening over here. Zealots diving forward. The dragoons trying to push back, but the other dragoons are at the back side. Now these. Now these reinforcement can't go to because there is another Terran machine shop blocking the way. Siege tank pushing forward. These Goliaths pack a punch and deny the, all the zealots. Now dragoons, would they be able to battle it out? No, they won't. They need the extra meat shields of these um, zealots and now carriers in production. Five gate, five star gate. Two base, two base. Dragoons trying to kill everything. But they wouldn't be able. Oh my god. This is siege tank. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, scan. There would be a scan incoming for JL7. <laughs> and there you have it, BT denied another factory scouting. It became a scouting factory, guys. Now the science vessel joining the fray sooner or later. These rates, uh, not rates, Corsair, not used are not utilized at the moment. Baguhum. Baguhum. There it is. This is Vessel is the crucial point of this battle. Still not using the Corsairs. One more hit on the Science Vessel and the DTs will rain terror. There are three scans. Seven scans. Seven scans. Available. Carriers going to run by scan placed at the second base zealot is a good choice but they need more firepower here is at the front uh here is it carrier flyby flyby and corsairs now the zealots Attacking the main army, these Rusk zealots are raining terror into the low ground of the Protoss. Carriers were about to engage. Zealot versus Goliath, who would win? And the Goliath would be the victor. Siege down in production. BC. Oh, we're seeing BCs now, but the carriers has arrived. The carriers has arrived and they will wreck damage um 
just attacking would be enough. He has three carriers and can easily scan her targeted. Because he knows that the DPs would be attacked. What is he focusing fire on? Oh, I think the Goliaths will be focused fire. And now. The cares will rain upon the Terran base. Jail7 can't do anything. His reinforcement is here. A VC standing around doing nothing. And the main base is denied. If you can't kill the scanner, kill the main base. So the scanner would be useless. Now, Picoy. Great setup. Two carriers is more than enough to deny all of these. Uh, there, but the thing is, there aren't enough interceptors at the moment. Now the balloons of war are raining over the command center. GG. GG is called. I think GG would be called sooner or later. Crafting more of those. Corsairs? Uh, crafting more of those Corsairs. Stargates. There are no, no mining for the Protoss. No mining mages. And there you have it. Corsair is the way to get the way to go for Sair MVP. <laughs> GG, GG is called. I think GG would be called. Carriers raining above the ground, raining above the skies. And there's nothing you can do. Each tank can't shoot up. Just one carrier is messing up with the production of JS7. But the thing is, JS7 has no more command center. I think this is the beginning of the end. Picoy for one. Picoy with a commanding victory for one, ladies and gentlemen. We're just waiting for the GG. That is a beautiful scene to see. A carrier dying and the interceptors don't know where to go back. Just simply crash down to the ground. Carriers moving forward. Yep, there's no more. Oh? Where is it? Where is the CC? Oh, there's still a CC. There's still a CC. He cancelled one of the production. Cancelled one. Cancelled a production. Now the carrier has arrived. What's <laughs> it? Carrier has arrived. Being targeted by the Goliath. But the thing are, um, the lights are not updated. While this is a plus one shielded carrier. <laughs> Proof attack as well at the top side. GG, 4 to 1. JL7. JL7 would have gotten this victory, but failed to. Capitalize the lead that he had a while ago. So
So we are now going to a bit of a chill match for game 6 and 7 because we already have the winner. JL7. And there is no more units for our opponent. SCV. The only SCV here is are these three, four, four SCVs. Science vessel's gone. DT's gone. Um, DT's gone. CCs are gone. Oh, still fighting. Terran Goliath. Protoss Carrier falling down once again, and all the interceptors are crashing. Third base for Picoy. Third base for Picoy. And soon to be fourth base. GG is called, ladies and gentlemen. JL7. What a game. What a game. JL7 losing at the end of the round. Picoy taking that back to back win for their series. <laughs> Get up supplying it log. Yes, the science vessel was the major key unit for Gel 7. It just so happened that um, no bluff. Ah, no bluff. Picoy was. Uh, Picoy's tenacity was shown and he continuously built zealots upon zealots upon zealots, whittling down. To contain at the front of his base a bit more and it, it's still hard even though it's an open area it's really hard to siege up a Protoss base okay I think that's that that is that ladies and gentlemen And we are done with the grudge match. Apparently, JL7 couldn't make it to the <clears throat> couldn't make it on the last legs of the tourney, and we have to hand it out to Picoy, playing a wonderful and masterful play. The strategies, even though it's quite crude and unpolished, it still work. Macro, um, the gameplay of Picoy shows us that even without good strategy, just with better macro, you can easily win games against other people. That being said, thank you for watching Patala SE Stream 2K Show Match 2.0 between JL7 and Picoy. Picoy, congratulations to the 4K and thank you to our partner, No Bluff, for this wonderful tournament. I'll see you guys on the next time. Goodbye and good night. Hasta la próxima, everyone.